Okay. This wall is bulging. The city cited that property for a bulging wall. I, I loosened some bricks there, but you can see loosened bricks um, in many other places. Look at the neighboring house. It looks pretty plumb. That means flat and straight up. We look at the neighboring property here. It looks pretty flat and plumb. We check it for flat and plumb using the digital uh, the Vilbus. We got a uh, 0.8 and then we're at on the uh, Stabila rather, the Vilbus. Uh, it's different, different product altogether. We're at 0.2 here. Um, right, right on this side of the 0.3 on this side of the property. On this side of the property, I'm going to go a little higher. It's a very interesting. Take note of the brick, how the brick to the left are smooth, and then the pores to the right, right down the middle. Isn't that beautiful? Well, obviously, there was a leak up there, and over time, it just did a great job of deteriorating these bricks. No, I'm just shitting you. They power washed them. This property's been power washed or something like that to get it to that much deterioration and then repoint it. Um, 0.6 on this side of the property. We come on this side of the, the uh, chimney. Uh, I'm sorry, this side of the door. And we're square up 0.6 also. Let me see if I can put it to 0.6. We're pretty much 0 0.6, 0 0.4. And on this side, oh, now I got 0.7. Okay. Let's do that. Let's go to the top of the meter. 0.7, top of the meter, roughly top of the meter at that course. I'm at 0 0.3, which which translates to about in four feet, uh, about three sixteenths, or not even, not even uh, about that course. And then the same thing here, we have 0.7, so we're actually out more on the wall to the right than we are. Because now we're at point, they were out now about almost about a half an inch on the existing property to the right. Property to the right. Property to the left is actually more plumb um, at this point than the property here. So this wall has a slight bulge. This is actually in, more in line. Just up to, let's say, up to the roof line or over to this window. I don't know yet because I'm not up there checking it. But the bulge is here, and all the way down through here to the foundation. The foundation, in this case, will be a stone wall. Once we get inside, you'll see it. On this side of the structure, about the same side as that line as that meter, we have we have a point two. Well, we've got a little bit of gap up there. Let's see if we can get to find that meter. Let's come on this side of the window. The window's bulging outwards, as you can see the gap. So all these bricks here, you can see it, it's a little ledge here. So all these bricks over to this. This gets kind of tricky over here. The party wall is here over top of existing floor joists. Um, and headers and things like that. There's a header in there, but there's a floor joist. This is supported by a, a, well, not quite a floor joist, but a, um, a beam. Because the floors are down here. I've seen this before, just showed it to you guys last week or so. So somewhere about here, um, they started caulking to try to keep this together. So somewhere about the party line, uh, they need to, it looks so flat though. This looks really flat. This might be some repointing over to about here. Uh, two thing in, two thing in right about here and taking the structure all the way out the brick face because it's bowed all the way over to the power line or right over to this doorway and then tying it flat back in pushing it further back in when I say further back in we'll look at the rotation in the basement just now let me set this video on pause hmm, pause just using the uh, tape the building is approximately 18 feet wide. I'm being generous. I went around the outside of that railing. Didn't go through it or anything else. Um, and I used the rough party line of the gate right here and where they meet there. I'll clean that up right now with a tighter measurement. Okay, the little cleaner measurement on that is 17.3. Now, 
Hopefully you guys caught on any of your brick layers or block layers caught on what's going on going on here already. Give me a second to move this over to here. Hopefully you caught on. What's the issue already? Let me take a peek across the street, give you a hint. You know, I like doing hints first. Okay. There's a hint in that. You should pause it and compare the two if you want to try to figure out. I already gave you the answers already inside my hint that I just gave when I went from this wall to that wall. Pause the video, because right now I'm going to give it away. Okay, here's giving it away. Here's some loose bricks, exploratory bricks to get inside there. Upon getting inside there, revealing the inside, we discover there's another layer of brick. Very porous in nature, as if water ran across it and caused a lot of deterioration down that. The owner then, since discloses, I'm explaining to him about it, it looks like a lot of water deterioration. They don't really make a brick like that. He explained that there was a lot of water coming down here from the roof line at one point. And apparently it was getting behind this, these two bricks. And it deteriorated that so much, to that point. Um, but, one more, that's not quite the end of the story here. Look what I can do. I can pull these bricks out. But more so, they're not tied in. The face bricks are not tied into the bricks behind. It's a, it's a veneer system, but it's not tied in. So that's where we can get water and swelling, expansion, sitting and start bulging the wall forward as water holds it between a pocket. Um, so as simple as that. Now let's go back to your, your hint was here. And if you can notice that there are bricks turned um, uh, let me see if I can get you this way in this wall system that ties the back course and the front course together. Follow the railing over, the railing to the right, follow it over and go up. Follow it over only a few inches and then go up and you'll see a turned course. When I say turned course, you'll see a course turned like that. And that locks it in, the front to the back. So we do have... Huh, Kind of a non non square brick too. Look at that. So there's a face, a beveled edge, and a face. That would help push the water back inside there a little bit, um, keeping it inside the structure, not out. All right, let me pause the video and let's get you downstairs. Okay, internal. We see the the two by four studded wall. Um, that was put on to the back side of the face brick. There's a nice gap. It's much, I'm glad, it, glad to see that. It's supporting the floor joists above, but the floor joists are supporting. It's not quite supporting it. It's going, floor joists going pocket to pocket. Let me get you some more light. Okay. So the floor joists are going from pocket to pocket, from outside wall to inside wall. That goes over that alleyway. The alleyway stops, because um, there's an alley here, stops right beyond this wall. There we go. Right beyond the wall. Internal. Let's see if we can do that. There we go. Internal by about 10 inches on that wall. There's the stucco on it. That was the finished wall. That's your party wall with some finished plaster. He's uh, since moved the wall in, in inbound which now makes the load support, if it's actually picking up the load on this choice, it now would, it could have a negative effect because it's now taking the load down these joists, uh, um, the, the study wall, and we would need to see to transfer that load to the uh, foundation, which in this case we have floor joists here, and he's, he's so close to the edge of the floor joists that that might not be something non-negated non it might be negated it might be no big deal um, but we do have a distance of approximately um, before we pick up the load bearing the edge we've got about five inches and then you pick up the two by four studs yeah they're not directly underneath each one of those but the shims look like they're just this is just sim shimmed and a decorative uh, finished plaster wall a wall to make bring his wall out even with the fireplace um, type 
existing building in these old buildings, this fireplace deal, and one here. You see the old ductwork? Right there, buried behind the wall. Um, okay, so he's got, a, he's got a lag screw up here. I'm not sure what his intent is. Uh, but that is not touching, coming in contact, as, as I can see it, with that joist. So the joists are still pocket to pocket. And that wall is non non load bearing besides bearing its own you know its own self. Now let's go down to the basement and take a, let's show you this rotation that I talked about. So the walls have been parged down here. Been here the other day. The other guy I did it a nice job, but nice and tight. Here the window is the. <clears throat> It's kind of dusty. The window, the grade, is right outside this window. There's the grade. <coughs> Excuse me. So our so our sidewalk is right about here. Well, sidewalk's about here, and that brick, if any, if any luck, this brick goes down to this sill, and this sill appears to be wide enough to take that brick back in but to take the brick to bring it further in as you can see it leans it bows well let's see if i can help you see the bow um the wall bows in so that's where we started taking this rotation now if you remember upstairs we had a full sill a full joist going all the way across on the second floor now here at the first floor we have um we have a full joist about 18 inches in it's pocketed, I foamed it. But the very wall, there's the step, the outside uh, sill plate, right? Uh, sill, right here, your last step coming in, the stone. And what they did was they used what I call outlookers, like a roofing design. And they ran from this joist with a ledger over into the outside wall, pocketed into the outside wall. Then they put this, turned a, uh, uh, some wood material approximately, two by two and a half by three <coughs> side flat on its flat dimension and maybe they pocketed i can't tell it's foam it looks like it's pocketed and that takes on the, the when you step through the door that little bit of span here that little bit of span and you can see here it's coming out of the pockets i can pull my hands out so you can see that's the wall put rotating outwards um and let's see if we can get you more clarity on that. So, this probably would have had a pocket down there, maybe down there somewhere. And it's gone because they ran the span. And there's a nail there too, in fact. There's a nail right here. And it just looks like it was pocketed in smooth at one point. And, yeah, I'll leave that alone for a bit. Um, so there's our gap on our wall. Between our sheathing, he's some sheathing there apparently. Three quarter, approximately five eighths, three quarter sheathing for a little bit on that wall. And to rotate it, turning around, we see that there's that what I call an outlooker again. It had a hanger for plumbing at one time. Back to the ledger, first floor joist, full full, full floor joist, and then this one turned flat. Um, and this is electric, okay. So there's your wall rotation, there's your sheathing again. Your sheathing's way up, way up here. Let's see if I can get to zoom in a little bit. And let's see if I can turn down the, the ISO a little bit for you. Give me a second to make adjustments to the, the aperture so we can get a little more clarity on what we're trying to show. Okay. sheathing right where my pinky is this right there that's three quarter approximately sheathing and then a huge gap well a gap approximately inch and a half to two inches between the sheathing and the brick face now let's zoom back out get a bit get a better detail of that let's see if i can do it this way that's the brick right here you're looking at the brick and then behind, here's the sheathing, and there's the gap between the sheathing, I'm sorry, sheathing, and brick. 
and that's your rotation and so much so that it's separating no longer pocketing this so the support now is just a little bit down there whatever this can whatever the deflection ability of that is resistance and that's probably where it was at one point one time way into here and they even notched it scarfed it a little bit and pocketed it in and then at one point because i should see a yeah okay this is soft all right there we go there's a pocket so you can see where the wall rotated and the load creep over time lowered this um let this beam here let's call it a beam uh take a bow in it and so there there's that issue that needs to be make sure that's terminated i don't think it is i think it goes to this box and that box appears to uh, still have wires going to it let's take a look at that for safety reasons while we're here nope it's cut on this side um perhaps you should just terminate that and make sure all right so that's the end of this video 60 minutes long and there's that little scarf detail we call it a little scarf it's a little notch Oh, that's a, that's a nice notch. That was a nice butted notch. And that might have went all the way into there. So, can we reuse the sill is the question. I reuse the sill many times. The city allows the use of the sill if it's stable and you have enough um, to material to bring it in. In this case, we're getting rid of one layer of brick so I can see the sill being reused and not an issue. I'll submit this to... I'll submit this and we'll see where we go from there. Hmm. Old power line. Yeah, I don't know if there's an old power line or a power line going next door. Here's, the, here's this power line. That sometimes they do some weird things. That needs to be addressed. Okay. And he's anchored to that wall with electricity, so that's that would need to be addressed. All right. Let's terminate the video, and you guys have an idea. Of course, we got a gas line coming through. So that need, would need to be addressed to make sure that um, you don't break the gas line outside. That's an old gas line. That's the new gas line.